let's get into Biden's um, first days really quick. So here's the thing. Let me preface this by saying there have there there's whatever Joe Biden did, whatever he's going to do every step of the way. You're going to hear a lot of crybabying from the Republican Party and from the right wing. It is this is why they um, have tried to discount his whole election. This is why they have tried to, uh, you know, bring up Hunter Biden as a the scandalous character. You know, keep in mind Trump's children. Uh, none of them are allowed to serve on nonprofits in New York because how completely corrupt the Trump uh, Foundation was. Right. So, um, you know, keep in mind, whatever Biden does, it's just going to the Republicans are now in full opposition party. Remember, they were total. Uh, you guys just hate the president. You just hate Donald Trump. He can't do anything for you people. Right. That's just how they, their posture were posture was the whole time of Trump, you know, which American voters pretty resoundingly made it clear that this dude's the worst president we've ever had. He, you know, um, you have to be very bad president to not win re-election, but then to also lose both houses of Congress in just one term. Um, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what Joe Biden d would do or could do. They were going to, you know, uh, piss moan and complain about it. But so, uh, and the other part of this is, uh, Donald Trump got a few things done when he had control of the, um, the Congress through the house and the Senate. But another thing Trump did was he handed down executive orders uh, like they were candy. And this is how he did the Muslim ban. It didn't work at first. They had to literally they would, you know, just they were throwing things at the wall, the Trump administration. A lot of these things were penned by Steve Bannon. Even after Steve Bannon left, uh, people were they were still just bringing his stuff up and uh, trying to run with it, whether it's, uh, you know, acknowledging a new capital in Israel and their far right government, or again, the Muslim ban, it didn't work at first. And they just write up another one to make it sound a little less racist and a little less anti-religious and violating the first amendment. And then, you know, have another one. Um, the, the border wall construction, so many of these things, uh, the DACA decisions, these were all executive orders. So on day one, and Biden made this clear, there were all these things he could do to, undo a lot of the Trump uh, executive orders, which to be clear, when Trump went in there, he started undoing Obama stuff from day one. So the hypocrisy, it's not like you, this is going to work. If you try to call out a Republican on hypocrisy, you might as well throw a handful of feathers at them and expect them to fall over. But let's take a look at some of Biden's um, executive orders here. Biden signs this one's very important executive orders to boost economic relief for Americans struggling amid the pandemic. <clears throat> Keep in mind, Donald Trump cut food stamps amid the pandemic. That was what Donald Trump thought was important to do. So President Biden on Friday signed two executive orders to boost economic relief for Americans struggling during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, here's my Joe Biden impression. We cannot, will not let people go hungry. We cannot let people be evicted because of nothing they did themselves. We have to act. He does that where he will like, he'll end a sentence very like, bah, bah, bah. he said in the remarks of the White House, Senate Majority Majority Leader Charles E. Schumer, a uh, Democrat in New York, announced late Friday that the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump would be held the week uh, of February 8th. So they're going to have time uh, uh, to, uh, what what's the word, um, confirm a bunch of Biden's people. But let's get into the nitty gritty of these executive orders. Here's a list of a bunch of these executive orders. Um, so look here, re-engage with the World Health Organization. Kind of crazy that we weren't, right? I mean, th think of all the damage Trump has done. He pulled us out of the World Health Organization amid a pandemic. Why? Because they were saying things he didn't like. That's just, that's Trump for you. Like, oh, well, you're not making me look good. Uh, who? I never liked the who. I was more of a Rolling Stones fan myself, more of a Zeppelin guy. I hate who. So, yeah, he took took us out of the World Health Organization. Um, Joe Biden created a position of COVID-19 response coordinator. Did think seems like it might be a good thing to do. Rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. Okay. Very, I mean, again, this is just undoing the incompetence and just really the aggressive, um, you know, uh, anti, anti-government, um, ideology that, you know, Trump very much exemplified, but that is typified by the Republican party. 
Um, he revoked permit for the Keystone XL pipeline and paused energy leasing in ANWR. Now, th- guys, this is this is Joe Biden giving progressives and us on the left a bone. Like he, uh, th- there are several um, executive orders that we should give Biden credit for as for us on the left. Things we were calling for the Keystone pipeline, like under Obama, they were sending you know, um, you know, like tanks and, and uh, body armored police to, you know, pull the Native American demonstrators, um, you know, out of there and sick dogs on them, all that stuff. Trump was no worse. Okay. Uh, or no better rather. Uh, Trump was much worse, but still. Um, so he revoked the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline. That's fantastic. Another executive order. He asked agencies to extend eviction foreclosure moratoriums. That's great. Those are moratoriums. Um, in the, uh, current plan, uh, that has been approved and the one that they're working on, um, uh, the, the, the coronavirus relief plan that's got to go through Congress, there is n- not uh, forgiveness for rent and, and stuff like that, but there is, you can get the government to help pay your rent. Um, you have to be in certain income brackets. There's all the means testing and all the stuff we expect, you know, uh, these more centered Democrats to do, but. Uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. We have the eviction uh, um, moratoriums and foreclosure have been extended. That doesn't mean you don't you're not on the hook for all that money that you might owe. Um, so he asked the education department to extend the student loan pause. That's good. He really should just write up another one and forgive um, tens of thousands of dollars of student loan debt. Uh, this is one thing he has seemed like he has tacked, you know, oh, yeah, I'll do 5,000, maybe 10,000. And more people are saying, well, we need more like 50,000. And he's like, yeah, yeah, 50,000. I'll do 10,000. No problem with 5,000. Right. He's just kind of uh, doesn't doesn't seem like he wants to uh, move that far on it. Hopefully they can, you know, point it, point out to him how important that is. This one here, launch an initiative to advance racial equity and the 1776 commission. Guys, I'm working on a history uh, degree. I'm trying to transfer for a history degree and a teaching credential. The 1776 commission uh, released by Donald Trump. I wanted to do a full video about this. It's heinous. It is like propaganda of the highest order. Um, it like verges on book burning, like ba- like banning I mean, pretty much that it was book banning, at least banning the um, uh, uh, 1619 project. Is that what it's called? Um, uh, the New York Times one about slavery. He wanted to ban Howard Zinn books like the people's history of the United States. So totally white supremacist fascistic propaganda. It's a good thing. It's a good thing that Biden threw that in the dumpster because that's where it belongs. Literally, none of the people who wrote this thing were historians. So that should tell you a lot. Anyway. Uh, revoke order that aims to exclude undocumented immigrants from census. If you guys did, weren't paying attention to Trump's war on the census, is a huge way to undermine um, the number of seats uh, and and the districting, how districts are drawn in the House of Representatives. And this is a way to um, you know to gerrymander districts in favor of Republicans. Uh, and it's actually unconstitutional, anti-constitutional. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you must count only citizens in the census. It says people. It doesn't matter if they're citizens or not. You count the people in the country. So um, these guys preserve and fortify DACA. Deferred arrangement for childhood arrivals, which helps the dreamers. Like, guys, this is this is huge too. Um, this is all really, uh, you know, if he's not undoing really heinous evil stuff from Trump, he's also um, doing some, you know, uh, uh, doing some things we could look at as progressive. Some of them make total sense. It's just this is what you should do. Like this: require masks, distancing on federal property and by federal workers. Uh, duh. Um, you know, like we, uh, I won't go into that, but I've just seen people, including in government facilities, be very cavalier with mask wearing months and months and months into this thing. And it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. Um, it's part of why federal leadership, you know, government is a slow moving ship. If you have federal leadership that makes clear what's going on, all the smaller governments, you know, state governments, county governments, city governments, that if the federal government acts in a certain way, they all turn their heads and go, oh, okay. Oh, geez, I guess it's serious. Um, reverse the travel ban targeting primarily Muslim countries. Thank goodness. 
um, just more white nationalist, uh, white supremacist, uh, you know, policy from the Trump administration now removed. This is what we voted for, people. Biden wasn't most of our first choice, but we knew he would do stuff like this. Stop construction of the border wall. Another piece of white nationalist policy that Trump passed with a um, executive order. And he declared a fake uh, state of emergency to use Pentagon money to build that wall, which uh, at that Mexico is going to pay for it. Totally going to pay um, combat discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity. This is huge too, guys. This um, is a big deal for people in the trans community. Um, it has seriously angered right wingers across the spectrum who that's, you know, they, it's, it's not exactly in vogue to attack a gay marriage anymore. Cause it's just been around and you know, the America didn't fall into a, a whirlpool, you know, the ocean didn't swallow up the country and, and uh, all hell didn't break loose because gay people could get married. So they've had to tack their attention to uh, tra trans folks. And so now, you know, that's that's what we have, uh, have here is, um, I think I have some more detail on that one. Um, here it is, here really quick, let's look at this story. Biden calls for LGBTQ protections in day one executive order, angering conservatives, because of course, yes, it, I mean, we knew that. On his first day in office, President Biden issued a sweeping executive order making it clear that gay and transgender people are protected against discrimination in schools, healthcare, the workplace, and other realms of American life. The executive order um, outlines a broad interpretation of last year's landmark Supreme Court ruling that gay and transgender employees are covered by Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits discrimination because of sex. The Trump administration interpreted the decision in Bostock v. Clayton County, Georgia, narrowly and only applying to employment. Um, Biden's order calls on agencies across the federal government to review existing regulations and policies that prohibit sex discrimination and to revise them as necessary to clarify that sex includes sexual orientation and gender identity. So guys, um, I, I hope I don't have to explain to you that this is a big deal um, for, for uh, trans Americans, transgender people, non-binary, everybody who, um, you know, doesn't have to worry about if the way they dress is going to affect their employment. Um, and you know, we at the, you know, again, like if, if you want to be on the left and, and only, um, you know, just be ready for Biden to, to do the wrong thing and fail, I'm here for you. I'll pat you on the head and say, it's okay. You know, uh, I feel your pain, right? Like Bill Clinton would say. Um, but we should give the guy credit, uh, where it's due. He's obviously surrounded himself with people who know uh, what's going on, that he that, that no progressives showed up for him and uh, that he needs to uh, engage in a certain amount of progressive policy. So let's really quick, let's wrap up the rest of these. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bam Soto's here. Sup, buds? Hey, dude. Sup, man? We're going over the executive orders. So Here's another one. Uh, require ethics pledge for executive branch personnel. Yeah, so certain executive branch personnel aren't going to be able to just hop off and become, you know, leave service on, you know, day whatever, and then the very next day go and become lobbyists. So there's going to be a little, uh, you know, bit of accountability there. Um, there could be more, of course, but, you know, hey, you, it's better than nothing. Um, modernize and improve regulatory review. That's uh, okay. It's a memorandum, not exactly executive order, but let's get through these end harsh and extreme immigration enforcement. It sounds nice, but I would hope that um, I would hope that, uh, you know, we can establish this commission or this panel or, or whatever he talked about to reunite the children with their parents, the kidnapped, tortured, stolen children uh, that the Trump administration has um you know, that made that a cruel uh, aspect of their immigration policy was, um, you know, and, you know, again, Trumpers are going to say, well, he didn't build the cages. Yeah, no, the, uh, and Obama didn't build them either. This is the department, this is part of the Patriot Act and the building of the Department of Homeland Security. Um, yeah, Obama didn't break down the cages either. He deserves all the criticism for that. But the Trump administration specifically uh, elevated the crime of a border crossing, an unauthorized border crossing, from a civil matter to a criminal matter. And therefore, anybody who crossed the border with children 
they just took their children, guys, and separated them. Child separation. Darkhood88 says, yeah, not a Biden guy, but it is not a good faith argument saying Biden equals Trump. These actions show that it's a big difference. Not where I wanted to be on everything, but better than a fascist. Yes, better than a fascist. <laughs> That's literally the choice we had to make in this election. Um, and we saw how fashy it got on January 6th. Uh, you know, even though we, we made it happen, we out, we voted out the fascist Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he, he tried to, uh, you know, hold on to power. Andrew K is here. Hola, amigos. Hola, amigo. Como estas? Sanctions are ethnic, ethnic cleansing, says Jay Coleman. And foreign policy. Yeah, that's where that's where the right wing is always, you know, is still strong in the Democratic Party. Um, but let's let's get through these. Um, let's see. Extend protection from deportation for Liberians in the U.S., that's that's nice. Revoke certain executive orders concerning federal regulation. So I think a lot of these were the um, the environmental regulations that Trump would just he just tried to remove uh, environmental regulations, just everything he could. You know, um, it's not like we you know people struggle to have clean drinking water in this country. Oh wait, yes it is. Uh, you know, Flint, Michigan, and elsewhere. Um, let's see, freeze any new or pending regulations. I don't know. That's a memorandum. Don't know too much about that one. Fill supply shortfalls and fight versus COVID-19 with defense production act. Isn't it weird that like Trump could have done this at any time with PPE with uh, now that we have the vaccine, uh, operation warp speed might've get, provided a lot of funding to research a vaccine, but the Trump administration didn't order enough vaccines. So we're already behind in vaccinations. It's embarrassing. Um, but so uh, I think this is a good thing. Biden authorized the Defense Production Act. Um, very good. Um, increase FEMA reimbursement uh, to states for National Guard PPE. Um, they're actually going to have uh, FEMA and the National Guard doing vaccinations as well. Um, establish COVID-19 pandemic testing board. Remember Trump? It tests. We only have so many cases because we're doing so many tests, right? Bolster access to COVID-19 treatments and clinical care. That's good. Improve collection analysis of COVID-related data. Um, also good. Mount vaccination campaign amid goals such as 100 million shots in 100 days. Another good thing. Um, I'm getting going to get the vaccine as soon as it's available. Um, I've already spoken to people in the community who have received their first shot. Um, it's not dangerous, guys. It's what we've been waiting for. I will film myself getting it. And I will show you, look at me getting the vaccine, um, you know, and, and try to try to normalize it and undo any of the, uh, you know, the the conspiracy theories and stuff you see around that. Um, provide guidance on safely reopening schools. OK, um, th this one has been a little controversial. I don't know if it's really safe to open schools until we have herd immunity through the vaccine. Um, so we already have tons of teachers who've died all across the country. Um, but th if there's anything good about this executive order, it's that at least he's providing guidelines. The Trump administration l basically let every state fend for itself. And then from there, most states let every county fend for themselves. And as I said earlier, uh, government is a slow moving, uh, ship. And if you're going to get it to turn, you know, you have to, uh, uh, you know, to, to make a turn of something like that, you have to do it slow and easy. Or if you want an abrupt turn, you have to do it from the top. You have to go federal down. And so that's why so much of the response to coronavirus was botched, frankly. Um, let's see. OSHA guidance for keeping workers safe from COVID-19. Oh, guys, you know about that agency that exists to protect your and my rights as working, uh, working people, as employees? Jeez. Trump basically gutted OSHA and defanged it across the country. So pretty nice um, that, you know, that we have, again, I mean, all Joe Biden has to do is have a pulse, right? And, and this is just our government doing what it's supposed to do. You know who first signed OSHA into law? Richard Milhouse Nixon, everybody. Did I blow your mind? I hope so. So um, let's see, require face masks at airports, other modes of transportation. Good, smart. Uh, you know, again, like making p face masks political was idiotic. Establish a COVID-19 health equity task force to make sure that health care is, is being and vaccines are being doled out in an equitable way. That's pretty good. Support international response to COVID-19. Restore U.S. global leadership. Ask agencies uh, to boost food aid and improve delivery of stim stimulus checks. Yeah, because people need help. 
and restore collective bargaining power for federal workers. Restore collective bargaining power for federal workers. So, um, you know, it, you wouldn't think that the bare minimum would uh, seem like just a, you know, a splash of brisk, cool water in your face. But that's uh, that's really how bad the Trump years have been, guys.